Today I want to show you how to do the calibration um, and I'm going to take my time while doing this because it's something that you're going to have to do quite often and if you do it properly once um, you should be okay for uh, forever. So the first thing I want to just refer you back to is um, lecture 3. In lecture 3 I showed you um, the, the calculations to do a differential op amp um, but this could obviously be anything um, any circuit that you want to use. So don't get stuck in why I use this circuit, that's not important. What is important is the method that I'm going to show you. So I'm showing you this for a circuit and obviously as I say you can use whatever you want. If you look at lecture 3 I told you that the output for this circuit is equal to V out is RA over RB times V2 minus V1 uh, plus V G and D. So this ground is just from the fact that this is a virtual ground. This V2 is on the positive side, V1 is on the negative side. So it's a subtraction and the ground um, is nice and steady out of there. So we're just going to use this formula now and we're going to apply it to a circuit and again this circuit is not specific you don't have to or at least it's not common it's not general it's just a circuit it's just something that i drew up real quick to demonstrate the um, the basics of what i want to show you so as you can see this is in fact also um, a differential op amp here so i'm just going to rewrite this so that it's in the same terminology or at least the same net names than what we have on the circuit here so the V output, which is this, this one here, is equal to what I'm going to term the gain. And the gain is 420k divided by 10k, so that's gain, times, um, and in this case it'll be V temperature sensor. I'm just going to shorten that and make it V sense minus V offset. And just so that we're clear, this will be the temp v sense temperature sensor output and t offset is this thing here which is also connected here minus v offset plus v g and d um, so we want to take this into um, uh, we want to make v sense the subject of this uh, of this equation so if you wanted to do that you can just write v sense i'll try to explain why i did that right and this i'm going to term equation one okay so why why did i do that i did this because i have to in some way end up at a place where i say temperature is equal to and then populate a whole equation and the one thing that will go into this equation will obviously be what is the center voltage? What does the center voltage give me? Okay, so that's where I want to head towards. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to use this equation and another equation. And this other equation is just my temperature sensor equation. So I also know from the temperature sensor that I've designed, I know V sense. So the sensor output is equal to V sensor offset. That's my, my sensor specification, the offset. It's 0.5 volts I'm going to use. So this is 0.5 volts. It may have been something else for, for you. Plus alpha, which will be my gradient, the gradient of the temperature sensor, which is also part of your specification. In my case, it'll be 10 millivolts per degree Celsius and this is 0 0.5 volts at 0 degree Celsius and times the temperature minus 0 so temperature in degree Celsius minus 0 so that is just equal to VSO plus alpha T that's V sense if you just convert this slightly then we get T is equal to 1 over alpha times V sense minus V SO. 
So you can see what I'm doing is I'm working towards this point here and I'm going to put V sense into here. So this T will give me temperature and I'm going to put V sense in here so that I can say based on the measurement that I take here, I'm going to calculate the temperature given these two formulas. So that's where I'm heading towards. And by the way, what I'm doing is an, I'm doing an analytical solution to my circuit. All right, so I'm just going to mark this as equation two, and then I'm going to take from one and two, I'll take So hopefully at this point, the penny drops about why I chose this configuration. I chose this offset here to take away the sensor offset. So the sensor offset should be cancelled um, by this V offset. Uh, and that's why I chose V offset to be very close to my, um, my sensor offset at 38 degrees, because you should recall uh, we wanted this whole thing to hinge around 38 degrees. Okay, um, so just uh, to take it one step further and maybe explain that a bit better, I'm just going to show you on this side here. Uh, we have some kind of a voltage sensor offset, which is what is the output of the sensor at zero degrees Celsius. It's here. And then at 38 degrees, which is what we want to make the center point of our amplification. So we want um, this amplifier to hinge around 38 degrees because that's our middle point. We want to amplify anything above or below 38 degrees. So I'm just specifying something here called VSO at 38. And that'll be the voltage output at 38. So VSO 38 is equal to VSO. So what's the sensor output at zero plus alpha 38. So this will be the output at 38 degrees Celsius will be whatever it is at zero plus that gradient times the degree Celsius. Okay, so that I'll term equation three. So if I just put equation three into this equation here, I get T is equal to V out minus V G and D divided by alpha divided by gain plus V offset. Remember, this is the V offset from my circuit minus V um, sensor offset at 38 plus alpha 38. So all I've done is put this Sorry, I've made a small typo. I'm just jumping back real quick. This is VSO is obviously equal to VSO38 minus um, alpha 38, which is why this here becomes a plus. There we go. So, in fact, my notation here is wrong and just fix that this here is equation three all right so from that i then put an alpha in here and this can then reduce to well it's the difference between v out and v g and d alpha gain plus v offset minus v is 38 over alpha plus 38 so if I now take a measurement at this point, I can put that in here. V, G, and D is fixed. It's just this virtual ground. V offset is fixed. It's that offset voltage. V sensor offset at 38 degrees. That is fixed. That I can calculate. It's just what is the offset at zero plus what's the offset at 38. And then this is just a, an integer 38 degrees. 
Right, so I can now use this formula to analytically calculate what would be the temperature at any um, at any output voltage of my sensor. But this is analytically. This is the output that I expect based on my design. So hopefully what you've learned by now is nothing in the real world matches exactly what you intended. So we have to now calibrate this. So this is the analytical solution. We have to get the empirical solution. The empirical just means what is it actually. Right, so now we have to calculate the calibrating constant, constants. We have to calibrate this whole circuit of ours. Um, and this is the circuit. Uh, so the way that we're going to go about this is we are going to insert a temperature here and then measure the response on the other side at the output. And then we're going to use that to calibrate our circuit so that we can apply a formula in the software to calculate what the actual temperature is or was. Um, so the first thing we need to do is just uh, in the sheet of ours, um, put in the constant. So I, I like to use Excel. I find it very useful uh, for these type of things. Right, so the constants that I have is my V, G, and D. Um, that, as you can see from my circuit, is 1.88 volts. 1.88. And then I've got V offset, which you can see is 870 uh, millivolts. So I chose 870 because my simulation was very slow uh, when I used uh, 880. So obviously in the best case scenario, you'd use 880. My gain, as you can see here, is 42. My um, sensor offset is equal to 0 0.5. That was my specification. And my gradient is 0, 0 0.01 volt per degree. This is 10 millivolts per degree is my gradient of the sensor. Um, and then the output at 38 degrees is just equal to that offset times the gradient times 38. That's it. So Excel has this very nice feature that you can edit the cell name. So this I'm going to call VG. Now that cell is not B3 anymore, it's VG. Um, I can do the same to this one, V offset, and the same to this one I can just call G. The same to this one I can call VSO. Uh, same with this one I can call alpha. And with this one, VSO38. There we go. So now I have all my constants here in a row. So I can then use them. And as you will recall from the calculations, um, the formulas that we're using, this is the formula that we derived. Right. So what we, what we will do now is for each of the temperatures, I'm just going to show you what the um, analytical value is first. So this is temperature, uh, 30, 34 actually, 35. I'm first going to calculate all the analytical answers. So what is the perfect scenario of answers according to my design? So this will be um, V out analytical. And I'm going to insert one other one here is V sense out. And then um, I'll do the calibration afterwards. So just to start off with, V sense is just equal to 34 times the gradient plus the offset. Um, so that's the, the volt that I'm expecting at the sensor output. I can show you this real quick. It's what I expect to see here when that temperature is present on the temperature sensor. The output that I expect to see here is given by um, another formula that we derived on the in, on the analysis page. It's actually this formula, and V out is equal to the gain multiplied by V sense. Uh, it's that V sensor minus V offset. Ah, the offset plus the G. There we go. So this is what I expect to see at the output of my amplifier. Now, what I need to do is to convert all these values um, so that I can get 
um, an, an accurate reflection of what's going on here. So I'm just going to delete this and clean it up a bit. Um, but when you apply a signal input here, you are going to get an output that is slightly different to what you expected. And that's why we do calibration. We do calibration to, to get the actual values out. So not what we expected, not the, analog the, the, the analytical values, but the actual values. So what we do is we're going to do an experiment. And this experiment of ours, we will do a measurement, V out measurement. So I've just taken, this is absolutely random. It's not really something that I've measured. But let's say these are the values that I've now measured when I ran this experiment of mine. So the question becomes, um, what formula can I apply so that when I get these values out at V out, I will report these temperatures. So it kind of, flip, it kind of flips the idea. So we've applied temperatures. We've assumed a perfect sensor because we're simulating. We don't have a sensor. It's not in the labs. We apply sensors, which essentially means we're applying a voltage at the input. We're measuring the output. So with our simulation, measuring the output. And instead of using our analytical formula that we derived, instead of using that, we will now use another formula to get this, which means when the circuit reports these, our software has to convert it and report these temperatures. Right, so the way that you, we do this, you can do this in multiple ways, but the way that I'm going to do it is just to use um, a linear regression. So Excel has this built-in feature where it's, um, if the formula is AX plus B, or let's make it mx plus c, um, the m is given by a value and c is given by a value. This is lin est, and the known y's are then temperature. So this is important. The temperature is what we want this formula of us to spit out. The known x's are these, and then um, this is just calculated normally, and we do not want to return any additional regression statistics. So if you do that, it gives you the M. If you select both, both of those cells, I'm just going to do that again. Sorry, if you select both of the cells, you press F2 to edit, Control, Shift, Enter. It enters, you can see it's added curly brackets there. So those curly brackets there means it's a vector formula. So this is the M, and this is the second thing that that operation returns. It's like saying, the function linist returns a first argument and or at least the first return parameter and a second return parameter. So if I now do the following, I'm going to say this is my, my linear estimation and I want to calculate if I then have this temperature as an input, what is my circuit going to respond? Well, obviously it's going to see this because this is what the experiment told me. So T calibrated is equal to this multiplied by M plus C. This is what it reports. So my software, when I give it, oh, that's not good, sorry. Okay, so it will report um, these values based on the actual temperatures. So that's the one thing to, to, to look at. Just for, for interest's sake, my analytical error. So let's say I just use the analytical formula. Um, T analytical error. Then I would have reported, I would have used that measured value and I would have applied it in this function here, which would have returned a temperature. So let's quickly fill this in just for, for interest's sake. This is obviously not something you have to do but this is for, for interest. So if I use, um, it's equal to V out. So that's V out minus VG divided by alpha divided by G plus uh, V offset minus V is 38 divided by alpha, 
plus 38. So if, if I just decided to use my analytical formula, this would have been my predicted output. I just want to check I've typed something wrong here. Divided by E divided by alpha plus 38. V out measured. Oh, I see, here's the error. And um, that is supposed to be 38 times that plus, sorry, made a bit boo-boo there. It's 880. So 880 millivolts is where my um, where my sensor will report if the temperature is 38. Beg your pardon. So now you can see the analytical error would be, um, let, me, let me first say the T analytical. The temperature that analytical will report is that. So T anal error would be equal to the actual temperature minus this one and the same for the rest of them. So this will give you um, the error. So that's, that's the analytical one. However, if we now use our calibration constant rather than the analytical formula, so now our calibration is supposed to be better because we based it on more information. It's actually measured information. Then this calibration constant of ours, um, this is the temperatures that it will report, and the error, T calib error, that would be equal to that minus this, and that would give you those errors. So I'm going to plot it in a second, but you will quickly see what the, the difference of the two between the two are. So you can just plot that. <coughs> So if I want to plot temperature versus the calibrated temperature value versus the analytical temperature value versus the calibrated error and the analytical error, um, insert x, y scatter plot. This is what we get, just adjusting the axis here and to go from 32, just so it's a bit more clear about what we're doing or clear what we're doing. And then I'm going to add the error I'm adding to the secondary um, secondary axis. So secondary axis, this one I can also put on the secondary axis. So now I have the errors on this axis and the actual temperatures on this axis. And I'm just going to change this also to start at 32 because that's my working range. And now, as you can see, I have, if I zoom in a tad, I have the calibrated value and the analytical value, which is supposed to be slightly more different. So the interesting thing is here that in a few of the cases, the error is actually less for the analytical solution than for the calibrated solution. So if we were to use a second order estimation that could come closer, um, in general, calibration is better than the analytical solution. So I think this is just because I chose crazy values here. Um, but as you can see, this is then the relationship between temperature that you put in, temperature that your system reports, um, that's indicated by the, the calibrated line there and the analytical line there. And then the error, if you use the calibrated, calibrated value, is indicated in orange. You can see it never goes above um, 0.6 up uh, below or above the um, degrees above the actual temperature. And the analytical one, if you were to use that, that's actually better in this case. It never goes beyond, uh, well, in this case, it's worse. Um, it's a bit worse than the, 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 the calibrated one. Yes, so that's how you, how you do the calibration if you wanted to. Now, I've also seen often what people do is rather than calculate this type of thing, rather than use linear estimation, they would use a lookup table. So what they would do is to put this into software, these actual measure points, and then if the output level, if the measured output level, so this is these, fall between these points, then they would do linear interpolation between these to estimate what the temperature is. So they'll assume that it's a piecewise linear function, PWL, that might sound familiar, a piecewise linear uh, function between these points. So you either do a lookup table where you take the measured voltage and check where it falls in these, 
and then either do linear approximation or just take the nearest one if you have many samples. Um, or you can do a calibration like we've done here, we estimated linearly, or you can do a polynomial if you want, or you can do an exponential, whatever you please, um, uh, or you can just do it analytically. You can also, if you don't want to use this, um, this formula here, you can also just enter a, a graph and then select the data. Uh, let's delete this series and add my series name will be, um, doesn't really matter, measured. The x values will be what the output was. That's what I measured. What I wanted the y values to be of my operating function. That's it. And now, instead of using that, that tight formula there uh, above, I can just, let me just fix this real quick. Make that from 33. There you go. And now I can say apply a linear estimation here. So I can do it through the graphical interface as well. Add a trend line, then I can specify a polynomial, for example. And this polynomial, I can make the order plenty so that it fits it pro properly. Um, much better than the linear estimation would. You can see the linear doesn't fit it well. Um, you can also do power functions and whatever. And if I choose linear and I say display the equation on the chart, you can see those values there, they match exactly um, what the linear estimate function here gave us. So there are two ways to do this, and you can really choose whichever way you want to do it. So as I said, you can use the analytical formula if that's more accurate, or you can use the uh, calibration formula that we calculated, or you can use a lookup table. And in this example, I just showed you how to use the, uh, the analytical formula to implement the analytical formula to return the temperature um, so this is based on a perfect scenario. So just to reiterate, um, in a normal circuit, you would likely find that the calibration formula will be more accurate. It's just because we're working with a simulator that the calibration is so close uh, to what the analytical formula gives. The analytical formula is normally a bit more out than the calibration, even if it's just linear.